insightful podcasts by informative hosts. Insights into Things, a podcast network. Welcome to Insights into Entertainment, a podcast series taking a deeper look into entertainment and media. Your hosts, Joseph and Michelle Whalen, a husband and wife team of pop culture fanatics, are exploring all things from music and movies to television and fandom. Welcome to Insights into Entertainment. This is episode 14 Legends and Dark Nights. I'm your host, Joseph Whalen, and my lovely and somewhat exhausted co-host, Michelle Whalen. Well, hi, everyone. And how are you doing today, Michelle? I'm exhausted. And why are you exhausted today? I am exhausted today because this morning I participated in the uh, American Heart Association Heart Walk down in Ocean City, New Jersey. Congratulations with, uh, to you for that. With uh, some of my co-workers. They've been doing it for a, a number of years now. And for some reason, I don't know why we never decided to go down, but this year we, we did. Um, you have the option of doing a one and a half mile, three mile, or five mile. And I did five. <laughs> well, so. and, and a worthy cause. Oh, absolutely. Um and it was a good time. I think we all had fun. The oh, definitely. The down. weather right. was beautiful. We couldn't have asked for a, a better day. So yeah, it was great. Yeah. So we'll talk. Let's briefly run down what we're going to talk about sure. today. So in our Disney detective segment, we have some information from uh, D23 regarding the legends they're going to be honoring this year. Uh, then Disney is doing, uh, or did do a sneak peek of some scenes from Toy Story 4 we'll talk about. Uh, then some news from the firefighters at Disney World and some issues they're encountering uh, with, uh, with the uh, ever-increasing uh, array of attractions that the theme parks have down there. Uh, then we'll take a brief moment to uh, pay tribute to a few uh, well-known members of the entertainment industry that we lost this week. Uh, then in our entertainment news, uh, we have some information on the new Batman. Um, and then we'll move into our insightful picks of the week. So, uh, are we ready? Sure. Let's get to it. Go for Disney Detective. So, first off, they announced uh, for D23, which is for those that are not in the know, um, D23 is a Disney fan fan club that they started a couple of years ago. Um, you get, you know, you can pay a membership, but one of the, the big things that they offer is every two years they do a big expo out in Anaheim. Um one of those things I've always wanted to go to, but by the time we think about it, something else <laughs> comes up and we've never done it, um, unfortunately. But it's a big three, four day weekend expo. Basically, if you're a Disney person, you know, a Disney fan to the extreme, this is where you, you want to go. Um, so information usually comes out, usually about the parks and um, you know, the movies and television things, you know, it's kind of like, you know, my version of Star Wars celebration for you. Here's, right. here's all the news that, that, and that comes was out. was where we first heard about the news about the Star Wars land. Absolutely. Know, yeah. So, yeah. so a lot of good stuff comes out. Um, one of the things that they've been doing the last couple of years is they do a Disney Legends, sort of a class of you know, whatever year. And they pick people from various um, areas that have done Disney work in, in some way, shape, or form. Sometimes they're actors, sometimes they're writers, producers, 
um, Imagineers. Imagineers, even. Um, so they announced the uh, the the cast uh, or uh, the the class, I should say, for uh, this year. Some some names didn't sound familiar. Others obviously popped out. Um, I might butcher some of the, some of the names. Um, Wing Chow, uh, Robert Downey Jr., John Favreau, James Earl Jones, Bette Midler, Kenny Ortega, uh, Bartnett Ritchie, Robin Roberts, Diane Sawyer, uh, Ming-Na Wei, and Han Zimmer. So they will all be uh, in attendance at D23 and... Uh, getting inducted into the the Disney Legends. Very cool. Yeah, so that that's always interesting to to see, you know. And there'll be YouTube videos, obviously, uh, of it as it comes along. So that was kind of cool to to hear the the list of uh, people being nominated for that. So that was kind of cool. Very cool. Yeah. So another thing in Disney news that I saw is that Disney is going to be doing some sneak peeks of different scenes from Toy Story 4. Um, What they're going to do is at the different parks, they're going to have a little theater set up, and they've done this before with other movies and things, where they'll do like a a little 15-minute show giving you little previews that you haven't seen yet of the movie. So uh, starting May 24th, uh, at Disneyland, they're going to be doing the premiere at the Tomorrowland Theater. Um, Disney's Hollywood Studio will also be doing it that day as part of the Walt Disney Presents attraction. So when you go oh, through nice. the Walt Disney Presents, you get to the end, hey, here's a preview of some of the uh, scenes. Even guests that will be on the Disney Cruise Line will be able to see... <laughs> Wow, that was really loud. <laughs> Making sure I'm awake. <laughs> Thanks. Um, so uh, guests on the cruise line will even be able to catch some of these clips as well. Um, Disneyland Paris is even going to uh, be doing uh, this as well, because I guess they've never really done all all parks and locations. Um so that clip was <laughs> a little clip of uh, one of the actors who is going to be playing Forky um, in the movie. So basically, if you remember where Toy Story 3 ended, Bonnie kind of got all the toys from Andy. Right. Um, she's going to, to preschool. She makes this toy. He thinks, you know, he knows he's a fork. He thinks he's disposable and but no she keeps playing with him so basically a lot of the storyline revolves around him and being saved and the toys go out on an adventure and we get to see Bo Peep who she's been absent because she kind of went her own way so there's a lot of stuff between Woody and Bo Peep and kind of finding each other again um so this will be cute to, to see, you know, if you happen to be in the parks during this time, here's a chance to, to see some, some sneak peeks at it. And for everybody else in the U.S., Toy Story will be opening on June 21st. Very cool. Um, so in other Disney news, uh, kind of going the way of um, what we reported about, you know, a couple of weeks ago with Disneyland Paris – having the issues with some of the workers. Um, An article came out um, from one of the local papers down in Orlando saying that the Disney uh, Disney World firefighters are feeling very stretched thin, Um, that with all the new attractions opening up, that, you know, they haven't really hired anybody new, and there's just so much more work going on now. So you have... Um, a whole bunch of stuff co- coming to the resort area. So they have the gondolas that are, are going up. Um, you have the Star Wars-themed land. And then you have a whole bunch of new resorts that are opening up right. as well. Yeah. So there's all this stuff, all these expansions, and the size of the fire department is still as small as it is. Um, so they're asking, you know, the a spokesman said, you know, they're asking us to do more but with less. Um, So obviously safety is their number one concern. They're, you know, 
um, and that's their focus of, of everything. But you know, with they need to try and negotiate, obviously, to to be able to hire more. So staff. are they are they unionized down there? Yes, they are union um, down there. So now they're trying to to work something out, you know, to be able to to get some more people because you know they realize if something you know, unfortunate happens, they're just not going to have the manpower to, yeah, to do well, it. And you have to figure even with like, like the gondolas, for instance, mm-hmm. they have to have some kind of oh, yeah. uh, means, you know, I mean, to be able to it's a get, different, right. It's a, right. it's a completely different attraction. They right. probably don't have the equipment for it. Right. Right. Um, but I mean, you know, as well as I do that the infrastructure down there mm-hmm. to support Disney world is like the infrastructure of a city. Oh, absolutely. Um, and, and just like with a city, if you don't support and keep uh, up with your infrastructure, mm-hmm. you know, everything else build on top of that. Right. Crumbles. So hopefully this will, you know, be something that they'll look at, you know, okay, we're doing all this, this and this. This is the next step that we that we need to take. So. Do you have any idea if uh, outside of the fire department, there's two fire departments in Disney, is there not? As far as I know, it's just the one, the Reedy Creek. But do they t- they have two firehouses though, right? Oh, I think that yes, I think they have two firehouses. So it's Reedy Creek is the is the fire district that they're right. in. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm assuming if there's any kind of real issues that neighboring fire districts oh, I'm will sure. support them. Oh, I'm now. sure. Just like when they they need security, you you would see the local you know police officers. Right, right. Because they have security, too. they don't have their right. own police though. Right, right, right. Okay. Well, that's good to know. I'm sure, you know, Disney's smart enough that they're not going to compromise mm-hmm. safety, you know. Absolutely. Preserve yeah. safety. Yeah. Okay. And that was it for Disney Detectives? That's it for Disney Detectives. Okay. So we did have a few losses uh, of uh, members of the entertainment industry mm-hmm. this week. Uh, I will let you conduct the uh, in memoriam segment here, dear. Sure. So the first um, was Doris Day, who passed away on uh, May 13th. Um, Her birthday actually had just passed not that long ago, uh, April 3rd. Um, and she died at the age of 97, so not... That's, that's a good life there. Yeah, that, that's not too too bad at all. Um, she began her career as actually a big band singer back in 1939 and had a bunch of various hits with different, uh, different groups and, and stuff. Um, but she actually recorded more than 650 songs between 19... 19- 47 and 1967. Wow. Um, so she obviously had a, you know, a lot of people know her from her films, um, various films where, you know, she was a co-star, leading lady, um, and obviously best known for um, working with Rock Hudson in numerous movies and obviously towards her later life, um, when the AIDS epidemic and, and everything came to light, she became an advocate yep. for it. Um, she stopped, you know, um, working uh, or doing movies, you know, in in the 80s, and, uh, but still was active in the community, um, was a big-time animal advocate um, as well. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and just had a really long and fruitful, you know, career. Um, She, you know, various awards, the Presidential Medal of Freedom in 2004, um, 2011, uh, the Los Angeles Film Critics Association Career Achievement Award. So lots of, lots of uh, um, achievements, you know, throughout her, her career. So, you know, again, passed away at 97. Um, and then just the next day, um, a very funny comedic actor, yeah. uh, Tim Conway, uh, passed away at the age of 85. Um, and obviously most people know him for his work on The Carol Burnett Show um, or the movies from the 70s and early 80s that he did with Don Knotts. Um, but he actually started out on McHale's Navy. Yes, he That's did. where a lot of people uh, knew him from. And for some of our younger 
people, he actually did the voice of Barnacle Boy on SpongeBob. Along with uh, Ernest Borgnine. Right. Who played his counterpart. Um, what was Barnacle Boy's? Uh, who's <laughs> the hero associated with? I can't think of it now. I can't think of it. We need we need the 12 year old. We, we need to call, yeah, we yeah, need to call her the, in for it. But the two the... of them were teamed up on SpongeBob. Right, right. So I thought, you know, that was, that was uh, kind of sweet. And again, he won six primetime Emmys during his career. Um, and four of them were while he was on the Carol Burnett show. Um, I know there had been different health issues with him and there had been some custody issues yeah, yeah he, you had, know, he had some issues later in life there and i gotta i have to say that you know mikhail's navy and the carol burnett show mm-hmm. as as dorky as this probably sounds but they're like two of my guilty pleasures mm-hmm. there oh absolutely um, i can't help but w- i mean he was hilarious oh uh, um, you know and and him and 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 harvey corman together and the funniest part was always when they broke character cause exactly they, they kept making each other laugh right you know it was, just, you know, so it was just i'm just gonna stare at you until you break yeah. and that yeah. and that and that was always you know the improvisational was really yeah, that yeah. that's Just what it was. Comedic genius there. Yeah, so you know, very, very sad to to hear about that. And, you know, not to to <laughs> to put her with these two legends, but obviously there was another um, death in the world of entertainment and that was Grumpy Cat. <laughs> um, Grumpy Cat was an internet celebrity with a piercing look of contempt, and she died at the ripe old age of seven. Which isn't that old for a cat, Which though. isn't that old, but um, she did actually have um, a uh, dwarfism. A cat dwarfism, A yeah. cat dwarfism, uh, which actually um, gave her that, that look. That, that scowl. So she really wasn't as grumpy as everyone right. thought she was. Yeah, her, her her owners, you know, had had quoted multiple times saying that she's super cute and cuddly and just loves to be held and rubbed, and she's really not as grumpy as everybody thinks. Um, she uh, her her actual name for those that don't know was actually Tartar Sauce. Tartar <laughs> Sauce, nice. I was gonna say we really can't say anything because of. You know, our, our cat's names. That's true. Um, and she was from Arizona, and she died of complications that arose from a urinary tract infection, unfortunately. And Which, you know, we can sympathize with our, our We had a cat. cat who had some urinary issues, and that might have actually been, you know, we when our one cat passed away, that probably could have been, you know, what it was that, that she yeah. had checked. Um and obviously there were, you know, a lot of people around the world that were very sad, uh, you know, about that. Um, and basically she came to fame kind of, you know, as a fluke. They, you know, somebody had posted a picture of her and then everybody just started doing all these different memes, you know, with her picture. And, you know, the the most famous one was, I had fun once. It was awful. <laughs> you know, Um so she was actually named the meme of the year in 2013 at the Webby Awards, beating out Gangnam Style and Harlem Shake. Wow. Um, so <laughs> when you think back to, <laughs> to, to that, Grumpy Cat still was relevant. You right. know, she, uh, she had uh, over 900 items on her st- in her official store that were available. Uh, she did different advertisements for hun- between Honey Nut Cheerios. She became the spokes cat for Frisky's cat food. Yep. And obviously one of our little guilty pleasures is the Lifetime Christmas movie, Grumpy Cat's Worst Christmas Ever. Um, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's a great one that's brought out around the holidays. That's, you know, you just, you know, and, and I, I, I have two stuffed, stuffed Grumpy Cats, you yeah. know, because it was just – because. One of our cats kind of reminds me of Grumpy Cat, you know, because she just always looks unhappy. Grumpy, yeah. Yeah. So it, it, you know, so th- I was, I was actually a little, little verklempt when, uh, when I heard the that she had passed, because again, she wasn't, you yeah, know, she wasn't that old. She no. wasn't that old. Um, so again, it was dwarfism that gave her that that scowl and stuff. But again, um, 
you know, she wasn't really as grumpy, you know, and there was a cute little meme of of her going around, you know, going to heaven and, you know, oh, Saint, I didn't see that one. Yeah, and St. Peter's, you know, says, Come on, it's time to go and says, you know, was I good? You know, were my memes good? He says, No. They were the best. So it was it was touching. It was sweet. Yeah. So that was that was kind of sweet. Uh, well, okay. That's sad. <laughs> that was sad. Moving right along. So we had a rather slow week uh, in entertainment news, aside from the multitude of passings that we had. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the one story I think that stuck out at us was a Dark Knight or a Batman story. I'll let you let you introduce us to that one. Sure. Yeah. So it. Uh, It came out that uh, Robert Pattinson of Twilight and Harry Potter fame um, had been tapped to play the Batman. Um, I believe it's Matt Reeves who is uh, doing this new uh, version for Warner Brothers. So he's going from sex symbol to bat symbol. Um, Basically, he's still kind of in negotiations. They haven't a hundred it sounded like it wasn't like a hundred percent done deal it was kind of like hey this is where we're going and from what i uh, was looking up the the script isn't even done yet like they don't even know who the villains are they're kind of going back and forth different celebrities have actually come out and said hey i'd be interested in being you know in your movie put you know put me in it um so is this supposed to be a continuation of the uh, um, existing ones that tie into Justice League, or they didn't really say from from what I was, you know, trying to to look up. It it didn't sound, you know, what they were what they were doing. Um, it it kind of sounded like, you know, whoever was doing the the latest Batman's with Ben Affleck and, um, you know, Justice Leagues. It was kind of like. Hey, I'm gonna get to pick my own person now. So it didn't really. So I'm not sure where is he younger, you know, because he is. He's in his 30s, where everybody else, you know, has. Well, the Ben Affleck series is set where he's basically reaching that retirement age. Right. You so know? is this kind of like a prequel of? everything or you know are we starting back again is he you know like where does it this you know i have to say this is the one superhero character that has (laughs) the biggest identity crisis in the movies um and and honestly it really does dc a disservice to have a complete lack of continuity to this character it's a fantastic character Mm -hmm. yeah um it's one of the most relatable characters in comics next to someone like a spider-man right which again that's another one that has an identity crisis but that one's understandable because you're trying to capture a a certain age Mm -hmm. that this character is in this character never really ages beyond that point right so when the actor becomes a certain age you have to right bring him back down and and redo it you know i mean how many people have played batman at this point in Mm -hmm. time you know it's it's almost a meme in and of itself right and you know from like i said it's not a done deal yet the script is still, you know, being written, but yet they're thinking it's going to hit theaters June of 2021. So oh, they, they kind I, of already have a date, but it's... I hope to God it's not another Origins movie, because if I get to see a Batman's <laughs> parents die another way, it just, you know, and, and does this tie in with you know Gotham the series at all? I don't know. And and they're hoping that I guess this version of it will be done right because of the disappointments of Batman vs Superman and Justice League. So I guess maybe kind of a reset. Well, I, I don't know. You I don't know, know what, what if if they if DC wants the movie done right, they should just turn it over to Marvel and let Marvel <laughs> do the movie for them. Because DC can't produce a decent movie the same yeah, way. So, Wonder know. Woman aside, yeah, yeah. They Wonder Woman produced... was really the the last one that they. That Every they other did. movie that I've gone to see in a theater from DC, I've walked out wanting my money back. Right, and you know most of them you haven't even gone to go see. Right. Just 
on principle. So yeah, not not good. The TV yeah. shows, I'll, I'll give them. They're, they're mm-hmm. pretty yeah, good. Yeah, the TV, TV shows they're definitely good with. So you know, yeah. so we'll see what they they come up with. So okay. So we move on to our insightful picks of the week. And as always, my dear, I defer to you. So I'm going back to Netflix. Well, that's good. Two weeks in a row. <laughs> that's weeks, a good sign. Maybe we'll drop the row. prices again. <laughs> there you go. Uh, so this happened to be a movie uh, that came up on my, my feed of, uh, hey, this is available. Would you like to watch it? Uh, called Wine Country. Uh, so it's an American comedy that's produced and directed by Amy Poehler of uh, SNL fame. Um, and it is her uh, feature di- dictatorial, directorial, <laughs> I'm still tired. Uh, she may debut. have been a dictator when she was directing <laughs> yeah. it. I don't know. You never know. Uh, and basically stars a whole bunch of people that you'll recognize from SNL, like Maya Rudolph and Rachel Dredd and Anna Gasteyer um, and Tina Fey. And then a couple of other people um, uh, that, uh, like Paula Pell, who was actually a writer for SNL for a number of years. So basically, hey, let's get our gal pals together um, and and do a movie. It's like the Captain Marvel scene at the end of Endgame where it's all the girl power, right? Right, it's all okay. the girl power. So the plot basically follows that a group of middle-aged women decide to go on a wine-tasting tour in California. Um, it was actually released in theaters uh, on May 8th and then started streaming on May 10th uh, in Netflix. Guess they're trying to get an award for this one, huh? <laughs> I don't know, maybe, since that's what, you know, Netflix uh, has to do. Um, but it, it, you know, basically they all were working in a, a pizza place uh, in the 80s um, and kind of grew up and and went their separate ways but always kept in contact and all lived throughout the country and one of the the group is turning 50 so they decide hey let's get together because we haven't been together in ages and kind of go through and you know each woman is kind of going through their own crisis you know that they don't want to necessarily bring out to the rest of the group but yet You know, there's a lot of funny scenes and some serious scenes, you know, as well. Um, Jason Schwartzman plays the sort of the the house, the house boy. (laughs) The one scene that that you, you know, you were when you were watching some of it with me. He's making paella in this big, giant. I don't even know what you it's not even a pan. It's, you know, like three foot by five foot thing. And he's using an oar. You know, oh, from yeah. a boat <laughs> to stir it because, you know, he's kind of like the quirky tour guide, uh, you know, of the group and stuff. So it, it was definitely cute. It was one of those, you know, sit down, have a glass of wine and, you know, just kind of laugh, not yeah, think. It was, a, it was a cute movie. I sat in for, mm-hmm, for, for some of it. Some yeah. Of it there and, you know, some of the things, you know, they were there were some really funny scenes. Mm-hmm. Um, but what I thought was was neat about it was it was very. um it was a common, like, comfortable sort of funny. Like, if you were put in a situation like this, you'd react the same way with right. that joke. You right, know? That's right. That sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. You know, there was a whole scene, um, you know, in an art gallery with a whole bunch of millennials, yeah. you know, and they thought it was performance art. And they're like, no, we're just being ourselves. And, you know, so, yeah. so kind of being at that age where I'm not the millennial – but I'm not, you know, in the fifties yet. You know, I could definitely relate to, yeah. to everything. So it was it was a cute movie. So very cute. Enjoyed movie. it. Very good pick. Thank you. So for my pick, I'm going to dig deep for this one. <gasps> uh, I'm going to pull a dun, 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 dun. television show. Uh, this by no means is new. Uh, no, it sure isn't. It's in its 24th season. Really? I didn't even think it uh, was around that long. They do a lot of seasons. <laughs> Within a, a year. year. I was okay. going to say. So it started so it was airing. was back in the 70s. No. <laughs> it started airing in 2011. Oh, They're wow. on season 24. They've got over 170 episodes under their belt already. Uh, this is a show that airs on Travel Channel, hosted by Don Wildman. Uh, it is called Mysteries at the Museum. Um, and uh, 
I'll just read what the teaser for the for the show is. It's the extraordinary, often bizarre treasures housed in America's museums represent wondrous chapters in history, but a physical display can tell only part of their story. Behind each artifact are amazing tales and secrets to be revealed. Tales sometimes brimming with scandal, mystery, murder, and intrigue. In Mysteries at the Museum, presenter Don Wildman visits a wide variety of museums across the United States, taking viewers on a sometimes shocking tour of America's past by re-examining what's been left behind. Interviews, archival footage, and reenactments bring to life the artifacts, enduring mysteries, some that have never been told before on television. So what they do is they travel around, Mm -hmm. they go to different museums, and it's always kind of a personal highlight when they go to a museum near us that we've been to. Right, we're like, oh my God, they're in Philadelphia. Oh my God, they're in some place in New Jersey. And and that's the thing, like Mm -hmm. they go to really obscure museums. Like they went to a book museum in a local town here. Right. You know, that like no one else in the world has heard of this town, let alone know. Like, I didn't even know the museum exists. Right, right. It's all those different museums that, you know, when you drive around and you see blah, 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 you know, some sign for it, and you're like, well, what's that? Yeah, they go there and find. You know, local historical societies, right, mm-hmm, yeah. uh, paranormal museums, but they go to major ones like the Franklin mm-hmm. Institute mm-hmm. and Metropol- the New York Metropolitan, you know. Right, right. So they don't discriminate in where they Mm-mm. go. The one thing that I find <laughs> that we kind of funny that we laugh about a lot is they'll tell you this long, drawn out, detailed story that's historically accurate and incredibly interesting, but literally has nothing to do with the item that they're highlighting. Right. With, other than that whole story relates to somebody used a spoon that was like this right <laughs> that's what that's what's always funny we almost make it a not that we you know, we've done it but we've almost made it like a drinking game yeah like okay is it gonna be related no drink and the <laughs> and the other thing that i love about it is they do do a lot of reenactments <laughs> and it seems like they go out of their way to find actors that look nothing like the subjects right right that they're portraying. Yeah, yeah. Because what you'll see is you'll see like a, a picture or a historical record of the person, then they'll show the reenactment. Right. And it's like you couldn't ask for someone that looked any more different. Right. Than and that. wasn't there one recently that we were watching where it was something where the computer or something was supposed to be from like the 1970s and it was obvious that it was like. A more modern. Yeah, it was like a police. They were at a police station or something like right, that. Right, and, and it was like was the monitor that was on there. You're and like, mm. it was like the 19 early 1990s, and the monitor that they had there was a flat screen monitor, which right. you know they didn't have at the time. Right, right, and I'm sure so, there's other things that they've done like that that we just didn't catch, but that was one recently that kind of made us laugh. So the reenactments aren't necessarily accurate they're there to tell the story right but the historical and this is what i like about Mm -hmm. it and the thing that i really wanted to highlight the historical accuracy of these uh you know portrayals Mm -hmm. and background on these objects is spot on and like incredibly in depth Mm -hmm. yeah and they they explore like or you may know the existence of an artifact or a battle that it appeared in Mm -hmm. But they go deeper than that. They go to a level that most people never want to know about. Right. But they draw you in with such a good storytelling mm-hmm. method. Right. That you walk away saying, oh, my God, like, that's really neat. Like, mm-hmm. you know, the one thing that I had told you about was mm-hmm. the origins of Pilates. Right. <laughs> you know, and they tell you the whole story behind it and how it originated in a prison camp. During World War One, from a German prisoner of war who was watching cats, and he was an acrobat and wanted to learn how to uh, maintain his physique and stuff, and they go into details and and it happened to be, I think, a little advertisement in a newspaper clipping that mm-hmm. they were showing off at the time. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's it was it's amazing the level of detail they can go to with something that's seemingly obscure right, and right. sitting in a museum. 
And a lot of times it's stuff that's not even on display. It's sitting in right, archive somewhere. Right, it's sitting somewhere. in the archive, yeah, yeah. So I give them full props for mm -hmm. their research department for everything oh, that they definitely, do. Oh, definitely, definitely. So Mysteries at the Museum airs on Travel Channel. Check your local times and listings for when it's available. Mm-hmm. And I think that's all we had today. I think that is it. I think that was a great podcast. And um, we'll see you all next week with another great podcast. Okay. Insightful Podcasts.